Hi, I'm Jared Hillam. There's a world that does not get discussed very much outside the four walls of corporate America, mostly because it does raise eyebrows and suspicions, and for good reason. This is the world of data brokerage. Most discussions about data brokerage are usually news reports with gotcha campaigns and how much money is being made selling customer data. And, well, well those are all true. <laughs> But it's pretty rare that the guts of how data brokerage companies successfully do what they do gets really discussed. And that's what I'd like to cover at a high level in this video. Now, if we rewind the clock about eight to 10 years ago, a store that asked for your contact information pretty much would only get what you gave them. And that worked pretty well for, well, well for you. But for the corporation, there were really, really good reasons to know more about you. Not the least of reasons was that you might use different aliases when contacting that corporation. Like using multiple email addresses or phone numbers, nicknames, short names, even multiple physical addresses. So when companies brought all this data together, they couldn't tell if you were you or multiple people with the same name. So that created confusion within organizations, which would cause companies to send, say, five mailers to the same house. It was just an expensive mess. Corporations ended up spending millions of dollars implementing internal systems called MDM tools that could keep track of these duplicate records, which itself was a massive undertaking and usually just wasn't very successful. Now, this is only the tip of the iceberg as to why corporations wanted more of your data. Some of these corporations wanted a lot more, like to know your preferences, where you shopped, how many kids you had, what your income bracket was, what your social network opinions were, and on and on and on. So to satisfy this thirst for data, companies began to emerge that started focusing on housing people's profiles, which had pretty much any data they can get their hands on. So if a person had four email addresses, they would house all the variations. And you might be asking yourself, well, how did they get all that data? Well, the very first origin actually isn't all that important. It's really the continued origin that really matters. See, pretty much in every privacy agreement you agree to, corporations gatekeep access to their content by including partners as parties that can access the data you are giving them. This provides the corporations a sanctioned way of sharing your identity with the data brokerage companies they choose to contract with. Now, the data brokerage company has a unique offering. They can offer to the corporation a service which will not only identify all the duplicate contacts they might have in their data, but they can also enrich the corporation's customer data with information that you never originally gave them. So you might not have given your favorite store your Facebook profile, but they can purchase it anyway by using the throwaway email you gave them. You see, your throwaway email is stored along with your real email and your real name and your real home address and your real cell phone number, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's really no hiding here. And yeah, it's a little creepy. The architecture behind this used to be pretty manual. It involved FTPing files back and forth. But today in the cloud, the architecture is far more sophisticated. The data brokerage company's data and the corporation's data can basically be processed and shared in something called a data clean room, which essentially automates the access controls to the data brokerage company's matching data set and the corporation's existing records. Now, if you ask me if data brokerage companies were being used in more backhanded nefarious ways, well, the answer would be yes. <laughs> but having said that, a vast majority of reasons data brokerage companies are used by corporations is to simply deduplicate customer records. See, they don't want to send you multiple mailers. And there are laws on the books that say if you unsubscribe, the company has to unsubscribe you from every place that you live in their data. And companies can't possibly do this without first identifying all the versions of you in their data. Now, there are less creepy ways of doing this kind of deduplication internally, which doesn't involve giving your customers data to a third party. If you're interested in learning about how to do that, I've linked a white paper to the video description. Also, if you're trying to get an architecture put together that defines how to deal with duplication of data, I recommend reaching out to Intricity to talk with a specialist.